The Reno 8 series already debuted in the Chinese market a couple months ago and has now finally made its way to the global market. Today I have with me the highest end version of the international Reno series, that being the Oppo Reno 8 Pro. The global Reno 8 Pro is the same device as the Chinese Reno 8 Pro Plus, which is littered with specs and sees some major improvements over its predecessor. We're talking a five nanometer run MediaTek Dimensity 8100 Max chipset, which supposedly outdoes last year's Snapdragon 870 and even the 888 CPU. It comes with a larger, brighter 6.7 inch flexible AMOLED display, which runs at a higher 120 hertz screen refresh rate 50 megapixel triple camera system, same great 4,500 milliamp hour battery and faster 80 watt wire charging. It comes with the 80 watt charging brick in the box alongside a charging cable and silicon case. Prices will be detailed in the comment section down below. This is Technic and this is my full review of the Oppo Reno 8 Pro. The Oppo Reno 8 Pro comes in two main color variants, that being glazed black or the color version that I have with me here today, known as glazed green. I absolutely love the design of this phone. It has a streamlined unibody design. The camera is not separated from the back plate, which is amazing. It flows so seamlessly and I absolutely love the color too. This glazed green just shimmers in all different ways depending on the light that hits it from different angles. And inside this beast sits a 4,500 milliamp hour battery and supposedly lasts up to four years with average daily usage. 80 watt wired charging which can fuel up that battery in just 31 minutes and boasts 1,600 charge cycles. A MediaTek Dimensity 8100 Max chipset, Mali G610 MC6 integrated GPU, 12 gigs of RPDR5 RAM, 256 gigs of UFS 3.1 storage, a new ultra conductive cooling system, as well as 5G, Wi Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.3, and NFC. It is protected by Gorilla Glass 5 on the front, a glass back, as well as aluminum frames. And this guy comes in at just 7.34 millimeters thick and 183 grams. Inside that stylish camera system sits an 8 megapixel ultra wide sensor. 50 megapixel IMX 766 main sensor, which is actually a flagship sensor that we've seen on previous Find X devices, as well as a subpar 2 megapixel macro sensor. Unfortunately, no telephoto sensor this time around. However, what does change this time around is a six nanometer run Mary Silicon X imaging neural processing unit, the same one that we saw in the flagship Find X 5 Pro. The eight megapixel ultra wide looks like an eight megapixel ultra wide would, 108 megapixel upscaled extra HD mode looks great, 50 megapixel main looks even better, 12.5 looks the best thanks to AI and 4 to 1 pixel binning, 50 megapixel at 2 times digital zoom looks great in XHD, as well as a 2 times digital bin down to 12.5, 50 megapixel main at 5 times you can do as well, as well as bin it down to 12.5 megapixel, which looks okay, 10 times looks average, and 20 times is the max zoom, I've seen better, but we have a 20 times zoom option here, which is great. Moving on to the macro sensor, I have seen a lot better out there it completely changes the saturation of the photo and taking a portrait shot actually does a better job than some flagships I've seen around. When it comes to video we do have 1080p at 30fps when recording portrait video which looks absolutely fantastic. Edge detection is superb. 4k 30fps main over here without the blurred background since there's no portrait option at 4k and moving on to AI highlight video it really does pop those colors though not quite as much as I would want to. Continuing the 4K 30fps while walking around. Stabilization is there, though it could be better. It's still a lot better than other mid-range phones I've tested around when talking about stabilization. Moving on to 1080p 60fps, this is where stabilization really drops down quite a bit. You can see it's a bit wonky over here, but it's still crispy, crispy clear on this beautiful day here in Johannesburg. Moving on to 1080p 30fps ultra-wide, which actually looks a hell of a lot better than other ultra-wide footage I've seen on mid-range phones at this price point. Though, unfortunately, there's no 60fps option or 4K when recording on ultra wide. Recording ultra wide at night doesn't look too bad and moving on to brighter days I guess you could say that being 1080p 60 FPS a little bit smoother and I said brighter days I actually should have said the opposite of that since it's a bit dimmer but a lot more clear. 4K 30 FPS definitely is the sweet spot over here 
colors are popping more. You can see the shot is brighter and moving around is just more stable. Now we do have AI highlight video, but it changes the color saturation of that light in the center over there, which I'm not the biggest fan of. And putting them side by side over here, you can see that saturation, though the AI highlight video at 4K is a flagship thing to have in a phone. It does an absolutely superb job over here. Eight megapixel ultra wide night off, night on. Looks pretty much the same. Main over here, night off and night on. Looks pretty similar, but actually really, really good. It changes up a bit when we go into two times digital with night mode off, night mode on. More saturation when it comes to the lighting, but a lot more clear. Night mode off with five times digital and night mode on. Once again, a bit more saturated than I'd like, but it is crispy clear. 10 times is the biggest difference over here. Makes a huge difference with night mode on. And going on to 20 times zoom, there is no night mode option and it doesn't necessarily look the best. The cameras on the Reno 8 Pro global version actually do a better job than I was expecting and by far the best that I've seen from the Reno series in quite a long time. And on the right side of the device, we do have a power button on the left, a split volume rocker, which I absolutely adore. At the bottom, we do have a dual SIM 5G tray. Unfortunately, no expandable storage over here. However, there is a water resistant seal, despite there not being an IP certification. USB 2.0 at the bottom, as well as the first dual stereo speaker. Second one at the top inside the earpiece, paired up with real sound technology. And at the top of the display sits a 32 megapixel IMX 709 sensor, which uses an RGB W, the W standing for white sub pixel layout. There is a new two times zoom option on the selfie camera, which is cool, I guess, if you're a makeup artist, we do have the 32 megapixel selfie at 1X and at 0.8X, both looking great. We also have portrait mode at 0.8X and at 1X, which has the best edge detection I have ever seen at this price point. But what about the video and audio quality when using the selfie cam? What's up guys, Technic here, recording a portrait video. 1080p 30fps that is on the brand new Oppo Reno 8 Pro global version. And here is a sample of the non-portrait selfie video on the brand new Reno 8 Pro. Do bear in mind that 1080p is the max resolution when recording with the selfie cam and 30fps is the max frame rate. And last but not least, we do have AI highlight video when using the selfie cam on the Reno 8 Pro. Pretty cool to see AI highlight video make its way onto the selfie camera, of course sitting at 1080p and 30fps. Let me know what you guys think of all the video options when using the selfie cam as well as the audio quality and of course the video quality too. So there may not be 4K or 60fps when recording with the selfie camera but it does a superb job when recording videos at night, even better with AI highlight video enabled but it does drop it down to 24 FPS, which is pretty interesting. But taking a look with it off on the left, on on the right, it's like night and day, if you ask me, in terms of selfie video recording. Taking a selfie with night mode on looks pretty similar to when the night mode is shifted to off. We do have portrait mode, but no flash or night mode with the portrait mode. The selfies come out pretty fantastic on this device. Fortunately, no 4K video though. And powering on the phone, we are welcomed to an always, always on display. And it looks absolutely fantastic, nice and bright. And we do have an under display fingerprint sensor. It is optical and it's fairly snappy, but I do feel like it's a bit too low down on the phone for comfort. I really wish it was a little bit higher up for easier reachability. And we also have 2D face unlock, which works pretty well. But once again, it's not too secure. But Geez, it's darn fast. One of the biggest upgrades to the Reno 8 Pro this year, as opposed to its predecessor, is the larger 6.7 inch flexible AMOLED display, and it looks absolutely fantastic. It is a flat dot display. It is still full HD, however. It has 1 billion colors, a DCI-P3 color gamma rating, and it is HDR10+, Amazon HDR, and Netflix HD certified. It has a crazy 950 nits of peak brightness, and seriously tiny 2.37 millimeter top and bottom bezels, not to mention even slimmer 1.4 millimeter side bezels. And due to those tiny bezels, we have a crazy screen to body ratio of 93.4%. The Reno 8 Pro now boasts 120 hertz refresh rate, which ups the ante from the previous generation Reno 7 Pro's 90 hertz refresh rate. And it just looks absolutely stunning, not to mention it is super silky and smooth thanks to 360 hertz touch sampling rate. It is running ColorOS 12.1, which is skinned over Android 12. And ColorOS has always been my favorite pretty much most well-optimized software skin for Android devices to date. It is super clean, super smooth. It is littered with Google services, as well as simplistic 
movements, I guess you could say, in terms of optimization, as well as a simplistic app draw, notification tray, and loads of personalizations that you can toggle between within the settings options. We do have 12 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM, which can be further extended by an additional seven gigs of RAM, thanks to RAM expansion, bringing it to a crazy 19 gigs of total RAM. But do bear in mind that that additional seven gigs of RAM is utilizing the onboard UFS 3.1 storage and not the LPDDR5 modules. And in order to power all intensive tasks on this device is the five nanometer run MediaTek Dimensity 8100 Max octa-core CPU. And when paired with the high performance mode within the battery settings of the settings menu on the phone, yields an Intuitu score of 796,498 points, which is weirdly shy of the 830,000 points I got on the vanilla 8100 CPU on my channel. When it comes to Geekbench, however, we got a score of 959 and the only chipset that beat it was the Snapdragon 888, which was actually a flagship chip of last year. And its multi-core score got a crazy 3,810 points, which leaves everything else on this list in the dust. And last but not least, we have 3D Mark Wildlife, which got a score of 5,915 points and an average FPS of 35.4, which is once again higher than everything else on this list. So the benchmarks are pretty decent. However, this phone can do more than just run benchmarks with that great upper mid-range CPU, I guess you could say the MediaTek 8100 Max, and that is play games, but can it play games at 120 hertz? Before we get into 120 hertz gaming, however, it is worth mentioning that there is a games app, and within that app, when opening up a game, you can bring up a games overlay, where you can open up apps that are small windows, and you can close them as well, put on pro gamer performance mode, as well as show the system stats menu, which shows you the FPS, as well as the GPU and CPU load. But before we get into that, let's test out the stereo speakers on this beast. Now back to gaming performance. Kickstarting things off here with Genshin Impact, which you just heard on these wonderful speakers on the device. We're running the highest possible graphics and the max FPS. The game is capped at 60. So even though the phone can run at 120, it's not gonna run at 120 because the game is capped at 60. We're getting an average of 49 FPS, which is seven higher than the average of the vanilla MediaTek Dimensity 8100 chipset I've tested on my channel with a min of 44 and a max of 50, which is impressive in flagship terms, let alone mid-range chipset territory. And moving on to the next game, that being Real Racing 3, it has an unlimited frames per second cap, but putting on the stats overlay over here, you can see that the FPS is getting capped at 60, so it does not support 60 frames per second yet, which is honestly a huge bummer for gaming enthusiasts out there. Hopefully this gets fixed with a future software update. But moving on to Bullet Force, using ultra graphics and max FPS, once again, the FPS is unlimited in terms of capping over here, but we're getting 60 FPS again. It is capping again. However, it is extremely stable. This and Real Racing 3 before it, very, very stable 60 FPS, which is great, but it's such a pity that a phone with 120 hertz refresh rate panel is not getting 120 FPS when playing such mainstream games that are honestly not very graphics intense. Gaming aside, Oppo have actually finally upped their Reno series game with the Oppo Reno 8 Pro, thanks to its streamlined unibody design. This single piece of glass on its back molds into its stylish triple camera system, which houses a flagship 50 megapixel IMX 766 main sensor that takes incredible photos and crispy videos, even at night. However, it is held back by the lack of 60 FPS at 4K resolution and is let down by its subpar, or I guess you could say average ultra wide and macro cameras. The selfie camera might not support 4K or even 60 FPS video, but the IMX709 sensor takes some incredible photos and videos in any lighting condition, thanks to superb AI performance. The optical under display fingerprint sensor is extremely reliable and very fast. However, I would prefer it a tad bit higher up on the display for better reachability. Speaking of the display, the Reno 8 Pro brings a larger 6.7 inch screen when compared to its predecessor's 6.55 inch panel. 
Not only is it larger, but has slimmer bezels and is brighter too. And this new AMOLED screen sports a higher 120Hz refresh rate, which is 30Hz more than the Reno 7 Pro. The extra refresh rate is great, but is unfortunately capped at 60Hz when playing most high refresh rate games. Hopefully something that will be addressed with a future software update. That being said, it games like an absolute champion with extremely stable frames even when playing graphically demanding games such as Genshin Impact. This is no doubt due to the efficient yet very powerful Dimensity 8100 Max CPU which rivals even some of the best chipsets around. But if you do find the 4500 mAh battery draining a bit too much, before the end of your gaming session, you'll be happy to know that there is new and improved 80 watt fast wire charging. And yes, the 80 watt brick does come bundled in the box. All that said, it's hard to recommend the Oppo Reno 8 Pro as the best mid-range phone around, but I can certainly recommend it as one of the best premium mid-range smartphones ever made, and is for sure the best Reno series device I have ever tested. I hope that you all enjoyed watching this video as much as I absolutely love the design of the backplate on the brand new Oppo Reno 8 Pro. This is Technic and I'll catch you in the next one.